reporting it on that uh, on this here on the now Congress stepping up its pressure on Iran to release Americans who are being held in prison today a house committee heard emotional testimony from family members of detained Americans one man whose father went missing in the country eight years ago yeah this included the brother of Jason Rizay and a reporter for the Washington Post and wife of Saeed Abedini a pastor from Idaho sentenced for holding Bible study sessions Robin Levin, Robert rather, Levinson, a former FBI agent who went missing back in 2007, is considered a hostage by his family. Congress also heard from the sister of Amir Hekmati, who is from Flint. Now, we have told you about Amir before, but want to recap kind of quickly his story. He went to visit his grandmother in Iran. He did in 2011 when he was arrested by Iranian intelligence officials. A few months later, he was charged with espionage, sentenced to death. His family says this happened after a secret trial lasted just 15 minutes. An appeals court, though, overturned that sentence in Iran. But during a new trial, he was convicted of cooperating with a hostile government and sentenced to spend 10 years in prison. And joining us now is Amir's sister, Sarah Hekmati, and Congressman Dan Kildee from Flint, who introduced a resolution calling on Iran to release Amir. Both of you, thank you so much for being with us. Sarah, if I could start with you, when was the last time that you talked to your brother? Well, as of this past year, Amir has been actually allowed access to phone calls. So really within the past two and a half, three years, we would never hear from him. But now he's able to call almost daily for five minutes. These are sanctioned, monitored phone calls. So, you know, obviously we, we aren't able to disclose too much with him, but at least we can hear his voice. Well, that's a good well, that's sign. Is he telling you what kind of conditions he's been facing there? I know for a while he even went on a, on a hunger strike because of the conditions. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously suffering. It's a prison that is, you know, not equipped to really even uh, house the prisoners that are there. There's, like, very poor prison conditions. The food rationing is low. He obviously, in the winter months, had no heat, would have to endure. This prison is out in the mountains, so he was enduring the harsh winters with no heat. And now it's a very, um, the situation there is dire for him, which is why he felt he needed to protest test his conditions and have a hunger strike. You know, we know that he was convicted the second time in part, we understand, because of his military service to the United States. But you say that's allowed under Iranian law. So can you sort that out for us? Well, that's the complexities of this case. Even Amir's Iranian attorney has stated that Amir's case is being held outside of the realm of even Iranian law. So if according to their mandate, a person of dual nationality, which in Amir's case, he's considered an Iranian because of his parents' heritage, uh, although he was born in the U.S., he is... Um, you know, able to serve in another country's military. But uh, but again, we, we're speculating when they give him a charge that says cooperating with a hostile country, hmm. that our assumption is the cooperation is that he served the U.S. military. We have yet to have the details on where they came up with those charges. Congressman Kildee, uh, last we talked to you, you had just introduced a resolution to bring him home. There's been some movement on that. Tell us what's happened here and how close we are to this. Well, we now have over 160 members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, that have co-sponsored our resolution. And then this morning, after the testimony by Sarah Hekmati and the other family members, the House Foreign Affairs Committee voted unanimously to approve the resolution and to send it to the full House of Representatives. This is a great opportunity for the House to do something that we very rarely do, and that is to speak with one voice on a really important subject and send a strong message to Iran that if they want to be accepted into the international community, they have to release the Americans that they hold. They have to send Amir Hekmati home to his family. You know, we're in nuclear talks with Iran right now. We know that. Does the effort to get these Americans released play into those talks at all? It's certainly affected by the talks. First of all, it gives us something we haven't had in 35 years, and that is the opportunity for direct face-to-face -face discussions with the Iranian government. What we don't want, however, is to have the freedom of these innocent Americans exchanged for some provision of the nuclear agreement, because that would actually lead to incentives for rogue nations to take Americans prisoner. So we want to use this moment to, while there's a spotlight on Iran, to focus attention that, that the world will not accept their behavior if they want this agreement to go forward, but not ever include it as a provision within the agreement itself. Now, Sarah, we have you on the line right here. Uh, so it sounds like in, in some ways your brother and these other Americans are kind of being used as pawns, bargaining chips, and, and the politics just has to frustrate you. 
Oh, it's absolutely frustrating because we want Amir to be freed. He's an innocent man. We don't want him to be uh, treated as a political ping pong ball between the conflict uh, that is happening between the U.S. and Iran. And obviously, we want to see this move in the direction of diplomacy as something positive that allows a platform for both governments to sit and talk face to face. However, we want the emphasis to be that Amir and the others need to be freed. Sir, we also understand that your father is not well, so time really is of the essence, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I, honestly, this whole thing, it's like to add to the tragedy of Amir's imprisonment. Um, during his imprisonment, my father was diagnosed with brain cancer and has suffered two strokes, and it's really been debilitating. You know, he was a college professor at Mott College, and now, you know, he's somebody that is home that needs round the clock care. My mother, bless her heart, has been trying her best to manage my brother's affairs here and take care of my father. And meanwhile, here I am with my husband in D.C. trying to advocate for Amir and do the best we can. Hey, Congressman, really quickly, what do you think the chances are of getting him home and how soon? Well, it's hard to say how soon. I think the chances have improved with the engagement over the, uh, the P5 plus one negotiation, the nuclear negotiations, but, you know, it's very hard to predict. I just hope that it's soon. It's far past time. Iran needs to send these Americans home, and we just need to speak with the strongest voice we can to tell them that. And I'll agree on that for sure. Sarah and Congressman Dan Kildy, we thank you both for your time. And you. your family is in many people's thoughts and prayers tonight. So we wish you the very thank best. You. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so